Hello, so we will uh, continue our discussion on cloud computing. Today, we will uh, discuss about uh, some uh, aspects of managing data in cloud, right. So, as, as we understand that uh, in, uh, in uh, cloud as, as we have discussed in our earlier lectures, that in cloud one of the major aspect is uh, the data. Because uh, at the end of the day your data and ev uh, even processes and applications are in somebody else's uh, domain, right. So, they are in the in is being executed at some somewhere else which is beyond your direct control. So, it is virtually host in some virtual data a virtual machine somewhere in somewhere in the cloud. So, it becomes tricky uh, to uh, on the security point of view that we have discussed. Not only that if you look at from the other point of view so from the clouds provider point of view managing huge volume of data uh, keeping their replicas and making them queryable and this becomes a, again a major issue. So, all our conventional relational or uh, object oriented model may not directly fit into the thing right. So, long you are doing on a on a, a small instances like experimental cloud experimental some uh, database application or uh, some small experimentations then it is fine, but when you have a large scale thing where huge amount of read write going on or the volume of data is much much higher. Uh, than the uh, um, than the uh, normal uh, operations, then the then it is it is uh, we need to look in a different way. These are the things which which come into not only for the cloud. It was there uh, little uh, earlier also, like how this parallel database accesses, parallel database execution, read write execute operations can be done. So those things become more a more prominent or a de facto mechanisms when you talk about uh, in context of cloud. So, what we will try to do is more of a overview of how uh, data can be managed in, in uh, cloud or what are the different uh, strategies or schemes people uh, or uh, this ISPs follows and it is not exactly the security point of view, it is more of a management data management point of view right. Okay. So, so we will we'll, uh, talk about a little bit of relational database already known to you, then uh, what you know to do that scalable databases or data services like one of the uh, couple of things are important one is Google file system, big table and uh, there is a ma map uh, reduce parallel programming paradigm uh, those are the things which comes in back to back when we are doing to the uh, things. So, what we want to do uh, whenever we are managing a, anything on a, on a cloud platform whether it is application or data we want to make it scalable, scalable in the sense the it should scale as, as the requirement goes up. So, scale up scale down uh, in a in a ubiquitous way or minimum interference from the or minimum human or management interference. So, that type of infrastructure we want to uh, come up with right, it is true for uh, data also. So, uh, these are uh, primarily suitable for large volume of massively parallel text processing uh, right, that is one of the major thing or it is suitable for environment uh, uh, say uh, enterprise analytics right, I want to I have a uh, if we want to do a analytics on a distributed uh, data stores right, it, it may be uh, a chain of a, um, a shopping uh, or commercial stuff or it may be a banking uh, organization or financial and financial organization even it is something to do with uh, large volume of other type of data like it may be a meteorological data, it may be climatological data something which need to be churned or has a distributed things I need to do some parallel processing down the line where the actual effect comes into play. If you have a simple database with a simple instant then you may not have gone to cloud for that right. So, it is uh, it is maybe a simple system or you buy a very 
uh, a, a VM and work on it. Then the actual effect of cloud things are actual uh, advantages of cloud you are not taking out. So, um, so uh, we will see that similar to big table models there are Google uh, app engines data store or Amazon simple DB which are uh, which uh, different uh, providers provide in different flavor, but the basic uh, philosophy are same. So, if, if we look quickly look at the relational database which is known to all of you uh, or most of you uh, users application programs interact with uh, RDBMS through SQL right. Uh, so, it is the structured query language or uh, SQL by which I uh, we interact with the uh, user programs etcetera. So, there is a uh, relational database uh, management parser which transform queries into memory and disk level operations and optimize the execution time. So, in any query we need to optimize the execution time of the uh, query right. So, if it is a large database like you whether you do project before select join before or after select that makes a lot of difference so, though the query may be uh, same. Uh, the query output will be same, but the execution time uh, may may vary to a great extent right. Like I have a huge two uh, two data bases like R 1 uh, say relational databases R 1 R 2 and I do some projection or uh, or selection of some of the things right. I select select uh, a 1 a 2 and then uh, do a uh, then do the join right. Whether I do the join before or after makes the things like suppose uh, if I do the select on R 1 the number of tuples come down from 1 million to say uh, few thousands. Similarly, for R 2 if I do a select on that right. So, then joining is much less costlier. So, whether you do the join first or etcetera that becomes the things that is a database optimization problem nothing to do specifically for cloud, but relational database allows you to optimize those things. Disk space management layer uh, this is another property the stored data records on pages of contiguous memory blocks. So, that the uh, disk movement is minimized pages are fetched from the disk into memory as requested using prefetching and page replacement policies. So, this is another aspects of the things like one is looking at that proper making it more efficient in the query processing other aspect it make it more efficient in storage terms of things like nearby things uh, if the query requires the some five tables if they are nearby stored then the access rate is high. So, database file system layer. So, uh, the uh, previously we have seen the that uh, RDBM parser, then disk space management layer, then database file system layer. So, it is independent of OS file system, it is a separate file system. So, it is uh, in order to have full control on retaining or realizing the page in the memory. Files used by the DB or database may span multiple disks to handle large storages right. So, in other sense like if I dependent on the operating system for fetch all those things then it is fine when your again database load is less if it is pretty large then the number of hop you take it takes it becomes costly. So, what you need to do we need to do directly uh, interact at the at the much lower level with the with the um, hardware or the available resources and that exactly this database file system layer tries to emulate uses parallel IO like uh, we have heard about red disk uh, red 1 red 2 red 5 red 6 e and type of things arrays or multiple uh, clusters. So, which keeps a redundant uh, redundancy into the thing. So, the your um, uh, this failure downtime is much less. So, that means it is it is basically uh, full or failure proof implementation of the database. So, usually the databases storage as row oriented that is we had tuples and uh, it is a set of row of the same schema optimal for right oriented operation the transaction processing applications relational records stored in contiguous disk pages access through indexes primary key on specific columns B plus T is one of the favorite storage mechanisms for uh, this sort of thing column oriented efficient for data warehouse workloads right. So, those who have 
gone through data warehouses. So, it is a it is a uh, high dimensional data, huge volume of data and being collected and populated by different things. So, it is a it is not a it is more of a warehouse rather than a simple database. So, this is this column oriented storage are more suitable for data warehouse type of loads, aggregate of measures where rather than individual data it is more of the analysis or analytics come into play. So, it is aggregation of major columns need to be performed based on the values of the dimension columns. So, we are not going to the data warehouse. So, it has a uh, it has a different dimension tables and type of things and we need to the operations are more aggregate operations right. We want to do some sort of analysis and type of things. So, projection of a table is stored on uh, as a stored on a dimension table uh, dimension values in case of a column oriented require multiple join indexes if different projection are to be indexed in a sorted order right. So, it is if it is a different different things because the organization ha may have different views for different uh, type of data and need to be stored in that fashion. So, data uh, storage uh, techniques as we have seen uh, it is B plus tree or join indexes. Uh, so, if it is uh, if it is so one is row oriented other one is column oriented. So, this is row oriented data and this is column oriented data and new we need to have a join index which allows this data to be uh, linked to one another. So, this you all this you will get in any any standard uh, database book or in standard literature primarily as we have mentioned we are following that both on stuff enterprise cloud computing book uh, for this particular thing. So, uh, that is why you have mentioned, but this is a very standard operation and uh, you can get in any standard books. So, if you look at the parallel database architectures, so it is uh, broadly divided into three aspects one is shared memory, one is shared nothing, another is shared disk, right. So, I will just see the picture first, then come back. So, this is a typical structure of the shared memory, right. So, these processors different processors shared the memory, here it is a shared disk. So, different processors shared the uh, disk and here we have shared nothing. So, individual processor has individual disk. So, in case of a shared memory suitable for servers with multiple CPUs. So, if there are multiple CPUs memory address space is shared and managed by SMP operating systems like uh, uh, the memory address space is shared among these SMPs and uh, schedule processes in parallel exploiting the processors. So, it, it schedules one things. So, that means, I have a shared memory space and I basically do a execution in a parallel mode. So, on the extreme other end is the slayer nothing. So, cluster independent servers with each of its having own disk space and connected by a network. So, at the with a backbone high speed network uh, every server shares its own disk space and uh, then uh, do the rest of the execution. And if you look at that uh, in between the thing is the shared disk like it is a hybrid architecture. So, to say independent server cluster storage through high speed network that can be NAS or SAN and clusters are connected to store storage data via standard ethernet fiber etcetera. What we have shown here, so it is it is a shared storage and this uh, different processor access this. So, based on your application type of parallelisms you need we can go for any of this structure. So, here uh, we see that it is more uh, this more efficient if the if the memory things are more compact where in the other end we if the processors are individually working on separate data sets and they are not machining to say then this could have been an advantage. So, if we look at the advantages of parallel DB of relational database, if we do not want to put that what are the uh, features of relational uh, parallel database structures which is which is uh, more advantageous for parallel this sort of operations than the uh, relational database. Efficient execution of Excel query by exploiting multiple processors for shared nothing architecture tables are partitioned and distributed uh, across processing table right. So, if it is if it is so happen that I can partition the table 
and every the 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 data content in the table can be executed parallelly they can be distributed in the different days and the processor can work that totally depends on your what is your working mechanisms out there so sql optimizer handle this distributed joins so whenever we need to do some join then we need to fall on the distribute uh, your uh, sql optimizer so uh, distributed two phase commit uh, locking for transaction isolation between the processors uh, so these are the some of the features fault tolerant like uh, system failures handled by transferring control to standby system so i can have different standby system uh, or some some with some protocol or some policy and then if there is a failure then i can shift that particular uh, execution to a some of the standby system so that is possible in this side of things and uh, restoring computation for data those these are the things which are more required for uh, data warehouse type of applications so there are uh, examples of databases capable of handling parallel processing traditional uh, transaction processing things are oracle db2 sql server data warehouse application are some of the vertica teradata neteza these are the some of the things which are more of a data warehouse type of uh, database now with this uh, background or with these things in our uh, in our store what we say we look at that cloud uh, file system now as we understand it will not go something become totally we cannot throw the whole thing out of the thing and start doing something new uh, because this database has grown for years they are fault tolerant they are efficient the, we have raids and type of things so we need to exploit some of the things and put uh, some more philosophy of which behind the cloud so one of the predominant uh, thing is uh, cloud fly google fly system or gfs and back to back we have a open source uh, stuff called hdfs uh, hadoop distributed file system so which is uh, what we say some one to one mechanisms with google file system so google file system designed to manage relatively large files uh, using a very large distributed clusters of commodity servers connected by a high speed things so it is whether gfs or hdfs they are uh, uh, enabled to work on very large data files which are distributed over this commodity servers typically uh, some of the things are linux servers which are uh, which can be which are interconnected to a very high speed lan so they can handle failure even during read write of individual uh, files right during the read write operation if there is a failure it can handle fault tolerant uh, it is definitely a necessity so if we have any that is any simple system term that uh, p of system failure probability of system failure is 1 minus 1 by 1 minus 1 minus probability of component failure to the power n so for if the n is pretty large then you can say that uh, we can uh, go for a that is the risk of this failure is minimal so supports parallel reads writes appends multiple uh, multiple simultaneous client program so it is parallel read parallel write and update by the client program and we have hdfs that is uh, hadoop distributed file system which is open source implementation of gfs architecture available on amazon ec2 cloud platform so we have hdfs which is uh, there so if we have a big picture so that how a typical gfs are there so there are some of the components are that is master or the name nodes uh, master node in gfs or name nodes is in hdfs and uh, there are client applications and uh, we have different chunk server in case of gfs and data nodes in case of hdfs uh, in 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 a typical cloud environment so single master controls the namespace so logically a single master is there which control the namespace so namespace is important because it gives us that how uh, how data are stored how data can be referred it's more of a it may more of a uh, 
a metadata sort of information which is controlled by the uh, master. Large files are broken into chunks in case of a GFS and block what we called in case of a HDFS. Stored on uh, commodity server typically Linux servers called chunk servers in GFS and data nodes in HDFS. So, replicated three times on different uh, physical rack network segment. So, uh, this uh, chunk so what we have we have the GFS or HDFS in the things below that we are having a chunk servers which are uh, basically Linux servers uh, chunk server or data nodes in the things which are the main custodian of the data and they are uh, the every data di is replicated uh, on different three times at least three times on different physical rack and uh, network segments. So, if we look at the G, uh, read operation in GFS, uh, so client program sends a full path uh, and offset of a file to the master right where it wants to read or name node in case of HDFS. So, we will refer the GFS master node and which is back to back when we it is referred to the name node in HDFS. Master replies on metadata for one of the replicas of the chunk where this data is found right. Client catches the metadata for faster access right. it reads the data from the designated chunk server. So, master from the master it gets that client gets the meta uh, this uh, this uh, metadata and from there it basically access this chunk server. So, for read operation any of this chunk uh, server or replicated chunk server will do where write append operation in GFS is little uh, tricky. Uh, client program sends a full path of a file to the master GFS on name node HDFS right. The master replies on the metadata for all replicas of the chunks where the data is found. The client send data to be appended into the all chunk servers. Chunk server acknowledges the receipt of the data master designate one of the chunk server as primary. The primary chunk server appends his copy of the data into the chunk by offset choosing an offset right. So, that that it do it does appending appending can also be done beyond end of file to account for the multiple simultaneous right. So, this is a uh, pretty interesting thing that even if you can append end of uh, EOF uh, beyond EOF uh, because there are simultaneous writers which are writing and it, it basically consolidated at a later stage. Since the offset to the replica if all replica do not succeed in writing in the designated offset the client retries right. So, the replica the all offset so idea is that whenever I am looking for a data I need to know that uh, for all the three replicas it should be at the same offset ideally. So, that I the read process does there is no delay in that thing because once it calculates it directly access the other chunks uh, on that offset right. So, fault tolerant in uh, Google file system the master maintains regular uh, communication with the chunk server what we say heartbeat messages. Uh, so, sort of a are you alive type of thing and in case of a failure chunk server metadata is updated to uh, reflect failure for failure of primary chunk server the master assigns a new primary clients uh, occasionally will try to this failed will try to this failed chunk server update their metadata from the master and it try. So, in case of a failure the chunk server metadata is updated reflect the failure. So, the chunk server metadata says that there is a failure. So, the next time you do not allocate or like that and the for failure of the primary chunk server itself the master assigns a new primary. So, it assigns a new primary to work on the thing and update the uh, clients occasionally will try to uh, try to this failed chunk server because it, it will be uh, flagged right. Now, another related stuff is big data or related concept is big data distributed structure storage file system built on GFS. Right. So, it is built it is a structure distributed structure storage file system um, it, it is built on uh, GFS. Right. So, data is accessed by row key column key timestamp. 
So, if you look at, so it is it is it is a uh, multiple instances are stored. So, there is a time key, column key and uh, of course, a row key which says that where the data is there. So, uh, in big table each column can store arbitrary name value pair in the form of column family and level. Right. So, here if you can see that uh, these are column families and uh, it is labeled and they store a name value uh, pair. Set of possible column families of a table is fixed uh, when it is created. So, which are the different column families will be there. So, that is somewhat fixed. Labels within a column family can be created dynamically and at any time. So, I can recreate the or create the table each big table cell row and column can store multiple versions of the data in decreasing order of the timestamp. So, that means, it is the chronology is maintained in that fashion. So, it is multiple versions are stored in a decreasing timestamp. So, again we see these uh, things. So, there are different tables there are different tablets which are referred to this table and it is a hierarchical structure and we have a master server it is primarily a registry or a metadata repository. So, each table in uh, big data is split into ranges called tablets each table is managed by tablet server. So, it stores each column family for a given row range in a separate distributed file called SS table. So, this type of management goes into the into play. So, that the uh, my access rate end of the day the access rate or uh, will be pretty high. So, a single metadata table is maintained by the maintained by the many, uh, metadata server the metadata itself can be very large. So, that metadata while storing this itself can be very large in that case it is again broken down into split into different tablets a root tablet points to the other metadata tablets. So, if the metadata repository is pretty large it is again broken down into different uh, tablets and there is a root tablet which coordinates with the uh, your metadata uh, these uh, tablets and want to real uh, want to uh, emulate or realize that metadata services. Supports large parallel reads and inserts even simultaneously on the same table inserts and done in sorted fashion requires more work can be uh, more work uh, than the simple append right. This is true for other databases also because once you insert it is basically you need to push the data aside and create a insertion point whereas, in case of a append you are putting data at the uh, end of the uh, end of the um, that storage or data uh, or the tables. So, Dynamo uh, it is developed by Amazon that supports large volume of concurrent updates each of which can be small in size uh, different from big table supports bulk read and writes right in this. So, data model for Dynamo it is a simple key value pair well suited for web based uh, e-commerce type of applications and not dependent of underlining distributed file system right. For failure handling, conflict resolution etcetera they, they do it uh, their self. So, this is a typical architecture of the Dynamo where there are several virtual nodes uh, and different physical nodes and they are uh, logical connectivities as soon. So, if you look at the dynamo architecture, so it is a key value pair with arbitrary value uh, key value pair with arbitrary arrays of uh, bytes like. So, it uses m d 5 generates a 128 bit hash table hash value. So, it basically try to map that where virtual node it will be mapping to by using this hash function range of this hash function is mapped to a as we are discussing that set of virtual nodes arranged in a ring type of things. The object is replicated as a primary virtual node as well as n minus 1 additional virtual nodes. The n is the number of physical uh, nodes. So, that any any the object is uh, replicated into the things. Each physical node server manages a number of virtual node at a distributed position on the ring. So, uh, if you look at that uh, this physical node server 
they are basically linked with this virtual node server. Dynamo architecture prime uh, load balancing for transient failure network partition this can handle write request on object that executed at one of its virtual nodes right forward all the request to all other nodes. So, it is executed one of the virtual node and send all other all other nodes which have a replicas of the object. So, that means, if I am a object if it is replicated into another n minus 1 node. So, one is updated rest are uh, being communicated. So, there is a quorum protocol that maintains eventual consistency of the replicas when a large number of concurrent reads and writes going on. So, this quorum tries to find out that which are the uh, minimum level of uh, replica will be there to handle this large uh, read write operation. So, next we are having this dynamo distributed object version write creates a new version of the objects in his local timestamp created. Uh, there are algo for uh, column consistency. So, read operation R, write operation W. So, read plus write operation should be uh, greater than n if the system is quorum consistent. There are overheads which will be coming up that is the efficient write large number of replicas are to be read and if it is a for efficient read large number of replicas uh, uh, large number of replicas need to be written. So, these are the two things which are uh, there. So, it is implemented by different storage engines at node level Berkeley DB uh, used by Amazon and may, uh, can be implemented to uh, in the using MySQL and etcetera. Uh, another the, the, the final concept what we are having is the data store Google and Amazon offer simple traditional key value pair database stores right. Google app engines data store in case of Amazon what we say simple DB all uh, entities objects in the data store reside on in one big table right uh, data store exploit column oriented storage right data store as well, stored data as a column family. So, unlike our relational traditional thing is a more of a row family or tuple base it is called column family. So, there are several uh, advantages or several uh, features or characteristics like multiple index tables are used to support efficient querying. Uh, big table horizontally partitioned called uh, sided and across uh, the disk whereas, stored lexicographically in the key values or the thing. Beside lexicographic uh, sorting of the data enables there is a execution of prefix and ra range queries on key values. Entities are grouped for transactional purpose because uh, if there is if when we are having transactions. So, that is a set of entities which are accessed in a more frequent way and index table to support varied varieties of queries. So, we can have different indexes or different type of queries. So, it is not we should understand it is not a simple a low a database it is a large database. So, in order to do that I cannot chant the whole database. So, need to slice them appropriately. So, that based on the different vary different queries it can be executed more efficiently. And there are few more properties like automatically it creates indexes uh, single property index or there is a kind index supports efficient lookup queries of form select all type of things. Uh, there are configurable in uh, indexes and uh, there is a query execution indexes with highest selectivity is uh, chosen right. So, it is uh, when we do the query execution. So, with this we will stop our uh, discussion here. So, what we try to discuss over over C is the different aspects uh, we have the notion of our traditional databases which is established fault tolerant efficient and there are different mechanism to do that. So, we have we have also already these parallel execution things and uh, it is present. So, when we deal with a large volume of data in the cloud which are likely to be there then what are the different aspects we need to look at. So, we may not be able to follow that this column oriented or tuple oriented relational database we need to a eh, sorry uh, row oriented database we need to for, for column oriented database and there are different uh, file system like GFS, HDFS and over that this data store dynamo and uh, your simple DB and those things what uh, which are being uh, implemented by various uh, 
uh, inter, uh, cloud service provider CSPs uh, for efficient storage, uh, access and I mean, read write execution of very very large databases. Thank you.